are having this same very close to be was pretty good to have it last week <laughs> to the snow. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed the snow. Um, so, <laughs> no? <laughs> so um, today's seminar is by Stefano. Um, Stefano is going to talk about exploiting ER in biomedical applications. So please welcome Stefano with two hands. Thank you, Gar. Thank you to you all for, for coming. Oh. <laughs> OK. And uh, first of all, I, will, I wish to thank you, all of you, for, for coming. And I wish to thank Mark for welcoming me in this lab, and, and all of you for, uh, for, your, uh, for your welcoming to me in, uh, in New Zealand. You know, I'm from, uh, from Italy. And I'm sorry for my English. You will apologize me. And I'm from uh, Danuzio University. Just some uh, information about me. Uh, my, I am uh, an electronic engineer. And my thesis was in robotic vision uh, in a spatial, spatial locating of 3D objects framed in a digital image by means of a laser beam. So I uh, was uh, in the period interested since in the uh, location and depth estimation of objects uh, framed by a uh, camera. This is a, a, a work which I am proud because I, in, in this work I um, skilled, I was skilled in, more, get my skill in uh, computers, um, computer graphics, it is virtual CD, uh, an online building of naive, of a naive CD. Then after my graduation, I had uh, my research experience at the National Institute of Health in Rome, in which um, I developed my skill uh, in hardware and firmware, and in projects funded by the National Institute for Insurance uh, Against uh, Accident at Work. Uh, the, project, the main projects were uh, fundamentally mainly on gait analysis and, uh, and a robotic machine for the ankle joint assessment. With the ankle joint assessment, the ankle joint is a uh, a very complicated uh, joint uh, uh, to study. Then uh, I was enrolled in some courses, uh, postgraduate courses in artificial neural network and cognitive research. In a, and again, in a, in a, in a dissertation, uh, I was involved in a dissertation uh, about uh, um, a robotic vision model simulating depth perception based uh, on motion parallax effect. This was a, a monocular robotic vision. Then I postgraduated in higher education and teaching strategies in computer science, electronics, and electrical techniques. So mm, what am I now? I am a freelance engineer. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a high school permanent teacher and lecturer in bioengineering at the Faculty of Medicine the, um, the course is uh, uh, um, occupational therapy. I don't know maybe if one of you has uh, ever heard about it. I think so. Uh, my hobbies, tennis playing, jogging, swimming, acting at the theater, which is uh, a little my hobby, but I don't know if I'm, not, if I'm successful. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, so because uh, since I am a, a permanent teacher, I'm always uh, fond of finding new teaching strategies in IT because uh, we saw that pupils are a, a, a little bit reluctant to, to learn uh, uh, IT or every, every kind of uh, applied sciences. So there were three main directions in, uh, in my education, in my present, uh, in my present um, research experiences. Robotic vision, uh, rehabilitative technology, and artificial neural network. These three ways led me to uh, the current research experience, which is a, a PhD program. I'm now a PhD student in functional neuroimaging at the Institute for Advanced Biomedical Technology in Katy. Um, collaboration with uh, the research center uh, for on aging, you can uh, have uh, you can 
uh, link to this uh, links uh, and, and, and and discover what we are what we are doing in our uh, in our labs. What is neuroimaging? Maybe most of you uh, already know, but uh, this is a study uh, and the application of techniques used for imaging the structure of functionality of the brain. The main uh, techniques are MRI, PET, EMG, EG, and IRS, near infrared, infrared spectroscopy. But the, the main uh, technique in which I am concerned is uh, for sure functional magnetic resonance imaging. fMRI is a technique for measuring brain activity. Uh, it's, a te it's a technique based on the, um, the possibility to detect the changes in blood oxygenation because blood, when uh, um, uh, loses oxygen or uh, catches oxygen, it changes its uh, magnetic properties. So upon these uh, principles, we can have, uh, we can produce a, a 3D image of activation maps, or this bold signal bold is uh, the acronym for blood oxygenation level dependent uh, signal, showing which parts of the brain are involved during a controlled task performed by a, a, by a scanned subject. How we use fMRI? The, pa the, pa the patient is positioned inside a, a tunnel, and uh, there are some uh, MRI-compliant goggles, special MRI-compliant goggles, in which are projected the stimuli, videos, tests, images, or questions. But the most important thing, the patient uh, is not allowed to move his head during MRI scans, because uh, uh, we could have artifacts on the measurement. Natural light movements are uh, allowed, but they are corrected via, via software tools. Uh, uh, the patient can perform movements and so uh, uh, perform his task only with his hand and the joystick in reaction uh, with the presented stimuli. And I, and I want to focus on this uh, particular concept, the ecological validity. Uh, which is, uh, which is as according to this uh, definition, the degree of, to which results obtained in controlled experimental conditions are related, are related to those obtained in natural environments. In, neuro, in uh, neuropsychological context, so the, the, the ecological validity is the degree to which the test performance corresponds to real world performance. So evaluating the ecological validity of a neuropsychological test has become an increasing important topic in the, in the past years. VR's ecological validity, uh, as we can certainly uh, uh, um, understand, uh, uh, several studies have highlighted on the role played by virtual reality. Uh, virtual reality uh, software based on virtual reality is thought to be potentially more ecological validity because it's representative of everyday situation than the traditional computerized approaches to, to, to test, to use in the test. So, which is my uh, research program, my PhD, exploiting more ecological stimuli in fMRI, fMRI uh, in order to, uh, mm, to make uh, biomedical application. Now the current approach is the exploiting, is explore the use of virtual reality and augmented reality in fMRI. But there is a, a, a very strong critical point, uh, as you may uh, certainly know or assume. VR and AR interaction is not possible with fMRI for the uh, motives that I mentioned before. So the, pa the patient cannot move uh, inside uh, uh, the fMRI and, has, and have all the interaction typically uh, in uh, virtual reality or augmented reality. But there is a, a solution at this uh, state, of, uh, state of art. Uh, this is a principle that now is well known. Regions that co-activate with a region in different tasks tend to be positively correlated with the region at rest, that is, uh, when the patient is not uh, doing anything. 
So there is a, a relatively new and powerful method that is rest in state functional MRI, which uh, can uh, um, evaluate uh, the in interactional, uh, the interaction, sorry, that occur when uh, within the region of the brain uh, when the subject is not performing an explicit task. So the typical uh, experimental flow uh, uh, may be this one. Uh, the subject uh, is asked to, uh, is submitted to a, an R, an R uh, a resting state functional MRI perform, uh, before, he do, uh, before he does uh, his performance. Uh, then the subject can perform his task. Uh, he, he, have to do, he has to do many times or more days. Then the subject is uh, uh, submitted again to a resting state fMRI. Then uh, the both analysis before and after uh, the task performance are compared, uh, are statistically compared, and, uh, and analysis and results are developed. Uh, so the virtual reality, uh, as I was saying before, provides an opportunity to uh, uh, enlarge the actual limits of cognitive rehabilitation because the Put, because put the patients in contact to daily life activities. Uh, but the problem is the, virtual, the VR technology immerses the user inside a synthetic environment. Uh, the patient is immersed in a, in a, new, real, in a new reality different from uh, daily life. So there is a necessity to add element, a familiar element to the patient because this could help to control disturbance variables uh, such as anxiety and non-familiarity that could, that could negatively influence the performance. So AR appears to preserve this ecological setting thanks to its intrinsic features. So the purpose of my, of my PhD program, of, my, of, my, of the group of research in which I belong to, is the use of AR in the evaluation and rehabilitation of amnestic mild cognitive impairment and the rehabilitation of MS partial neglect. What do you say MCI? MCI, mild cognitive impairment, is often considered a, trans a transitional state between uh, the normal aging and uh, AD, Alzheimer's disease. S typical symptoms for the amnestic form is the memory complaints, memory deficits, selective loss of personal uh, specific knowledge, uh, difficulties in naming objects and, uh, and famous people. But uh, what, uh, to evaluate M AMCI, what is the, the main topic which is considered? Episodic mem memory, because it is the, one of the hallmarks of early clinical manifestation of amnestic mild cognitive impairment. Episodic memory, uh, just uh, in a definition, may be described as the conscious recollection of personal events uh, uh, collected uh, with the, within the context in which they happen. But uh, the problem is now that episodic memory is generally assessed with verbal tasks. But you know that most people remember in everyday life uh, what they see. So uh, there is a visual information to to, uh, to, mm, to recover. Uh, so uh, the, the various clinical tests uh, now, they measure only one aspect or mm, otherwise in isolation, but there, no, there are no memory tests who bind all the components of what, where, and when the memory can recall. So we, we, we cannot consider this kind of test uh, ecological ones. So uh, neuropsychological assessment should be some degree of similarity to the demands of daily life. But as uh, I reported uh, now in some studies, uh, standard neuropsychological memory assessments are only moderately correlated with uh, daily, li daily living skills. So VR seems to be a good method to investigate episodic memory. Uh, VR is, is demonstrated to be uh, adapted for early diagnosis and rehabilitation of patients with AMCI with then traditional memory tools. This is a study in, in, that I am mentioning, 
plan chair uh, this year uh, who um, uh, study episodic memory deficit in, in AD and MCI using urban environments created through uh, VR and inspired to the city of Paris. The author suggests to, to build up and reproduce an infinite variety of environments, such as the patient's place of living. But, uh, sorry. Oh, uh, moment. So, uh, sorry. So AR uh, is, um, can be, can overcome this, uh, the limit of creation. The, the R can be the real patient place of living with experimental insertion. So that's why we're, are we thinking uh, to uh, apply RR in an experiment similar to that uh, uh, of by Plancher to assess the ecological validity of the EAR tools. Uh, we saw evaluation, but we can apply AR even in rehabilitation. Uh, why? Because there is a, a concept that is not new for you, uh, neural, neuronal plasticity. Uh, this concept refers to the nervous system ability to adapt its organization in response to injuries or changes in the environment. It, a recent meta-analysis supports the idea that cognitive re rehabilitation can attenuate the risk of cognitive decline in elderly subjects because there is not at a current moment a pharma pharmacological therapy for amnestic MCI. So several rehabilitative training programs are, in, are implemented on, the base, on this basis. So cognitive rehabilitation can be realized by using programs concentrated on specific activities. Uh, so, um, uh, personally relevant goals are identified and, uh, and then a keep of therapist, patient, the same family can work together to uh, identify these uh, uh, activities and achieve the goals to, uh, to learn, the, um, to teach, sorry, uh, the subject this, uh, this activity by means of an AR application that's what could be useful to do, I think, uh, uh, with uh, AR. And so to improve cognitive function through a set of specified training interventions. So a possible intervention could be most simple, a recording a specific environment familiar to the patient, asking the patient to navigate into this uh, the projected environment on the goggles, and inserting, eliminating ritual object, uh, asking the, the patient to do some memory tasks. This is. Uh, um, um, a, a talk about uh, MC, AMCI. Now we uh, step into uh, MA special neglect. Um, I borrowed this uh, definition, uh, which is a famous definition, maybe in a famous paper, uh, Rossetti, uh, uh, in, in the 1998. What, what is it? Uh, what is MA special neglect? Uh, it is a uh, it is a, uh, a disease who, who struck uh, people uh, struck by stroke. Sorry for the uh, jo jokes of words, but uh, um, these patients show the semi spatial neglect, uh, which is a, a neurological deficit of perception, attention, representation. So they uh, neglect the left side of their world. So they it's even. It's like they don't see it, but it's not a, a problem of seeing or not. Uh, there is a much discussion about what is the, the reason of this, uh, this kind of uh, disease. The, the thing that has been, that has been uh, demonstrated is that a very effective therapy is a prism adaptation, prism adaptation uh, discovered by uh, this author Rossetti. Prism adaptation is a brief exposure to prismatic lenses deviating the visual field a few degrees rightwards or left for leftwards uh, in general, but uh, uh, for neglect people uh, who present uh, uh, typically uh, a neglect on the, the left side, the, uh, the prismatic uh, uh, exposure is uh, leftwards. Sorry, left, rightwards. In uh, PA training, prism adaptation 
training in what uh, what um, consists of uh, some two or three uh, steps. Uh, the patient has to wear this kind of glasses, and uh, he, this these glasses uh, um, uh, shift the vision of 10 degrees uh, uh, rightwards, uh, about 10, 10 degrees, um, and he is asked to um, to reach with his finger, with his right finger, to reach an object. Uh, the, uh, the, the patient the subject uh, see uh, a discrepancy when he tries to uh, to reach this object which is uh, which he sees uh, which he thinks is located uh, normally but he sees his, uh, um, his are that he cannot reach this um, this object this target but during the trials the subject is asked to, to reach the target so he tried to correct the position of the finger deviating uh, the limb to the left. This error correction process is called ad adaptation. So the, the patient uh, uh, mm, think that uh, he cannot reach the, the target at first, but then he, he has to, uh, to misalign what he thinks of the world and what he thinks of, his, of the position of, uh, the, of his arm. After this kind of adaptation, that uh, maybe can last uh, one hour, I, uh, I don't know exactly. But after a short time, uh, prism lenses are removed. And if you ask uh, um, a patient to perform the same task, you will see that he will deviate leftwards uh, uh, respect to the real position of the, of the, of the target. So he will uh, try to uh, reach the object or you will see him uh, going to the left of the object. This is the so-called after effect of uh, uh, PA, prism adaptation. The results, because this is a, um, you can apply this to everyone. Everyone will show this kind of uh, uh, after effect. But if you uh, apply this one to uh, neglect people, you will find that uh, after a short period of visual, visual motor adaptation, uh, the, visual, um, the, um, the visual field for the neglect people, the uh, people with disease, uh, who, uh, who have a disease of neglect, the visual field uh, will shift. And uh, uh, you will have many, uh, uh, you will observe uh, uh, a good uh, amelior amelior amelioration amelioration in, in the uh, traditional uh, neuro neuropsychological tests assessing visual neglect and this kind of uh, amelioration is can be found uh, for two hours or, or more why uh, this happen uh, a possible reason is that uh, the adaptation uh, seems to alter higher level of the internal spatial representation. So some neurologists think that neglect can be considered a sort of dysfunctional uh, calibration process. So they, they don't see the straight head line uh, uh, um, as we normally have, but we, they have the straight head, head line shifted to the right. They had they had a, a reduced workspace. Uh, but when they uh, wear these prismatic lenses, there is a sort of recalibration, uh, which rec which uh, led the patient to correct the error induced by the prism. So, the aims are the, the aims of, of uh, application. Uh, to, uh, the aim of my uh, research program application is uh, uh, moving from this concept, feeling that feeling of discrepancy leads to recalibration, is to um, further investigate whether a more ecological environment or a gradually uh, re recreation of the feeling of discrepancy, uh, letting the field of vision undistorted, could improve uh, duration and efficacy of this prism adaptation effects. So an application in AR applied for the neglect disease 
allows uh, the achievement of many aims. The, the most principal are uh, the displacement of the soul hand, the regulation the, of the displacement, a soft regulation of the displacement, an interaction with virtual objects, and the possibility to regulate uh, the presence and uh, uh, the absence of the target on the scene. This cannot be possible in the uh, traditional prism lenses. So, uh, interesting conclusion uh, could, uh, could arise, we don't know, maybe, uh, compared to the traditional prism lenses. Uh, and this is interesting to see how the brain reacts to the deception of senses. This is what uh, we imagine it could be uh, um, done with this pair of glasses. Uh, this is uh, the, real, the real scene. This is the hand of the, of the subject, so the, the right, the right uh, uh, finger. Uh, this is the, the, the scene that, that must be viewed by the goggles uh, were worn by the, the, the subject. As you see, there is a, a, a shift of the of the, of the hand and the arm, consequently, to the right. You can put in the scene a virtual object, and you uh, and the, the the object will see is uh, the ob the object is hand. Okay, but uh, he he will uh, he will have the opportunity to interact with this virtual object because uh, it will see, uh, we can, we can, uh, it will see a sort of virtual end. It's not his end anymore, but it's a virtual end. So the virtual end can um, inter interact with virtual, virtual object. Uh, some solution we have discussed with, uh, with, with them, with, uh, with Mark, uh, uh, with, uh, with you, you remember we, 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 talked, we, we talked about it. A primitive uh, solution could be uh, to put the hand inside the box, uh, and this box uh, is um, uh, has a, a uniform background, and there is a, a, a camera inside uh, the, po the box. So the patient put the hand inside the box, and he cannot see his hand. And he can see the hand only on a, on a monitor. And then he has to grasp or point in some virtual object. This has a great advantage in the, in the, real, in the accomplishment, in the realization, because it is easy to, uh, to do the hand detection with a uniform background. It is easy to, to displace the, um, the hand. But it is a great disadvantage that the patient does not perceive the hand on the monitor as his own end. So the mechanism of real recalibration is not enabled in this way. So we can apply some correction on this, uh, this uh, primitive idea. The idea uh, to project the image on goggles, uh, so we have to reconstruct the patient point of view using a marker outside the box. So we have uh, to shift the hand uh, using a marker inside the box. The uh, disadvantage is uh, certainly a, a great, uh, a still a loss of uh, uh, ecological uh, validity. Um, why? Mm, we so are searching for ecological validity, but if you use a background that is not uniform, uh, the background uh, must be reconstructed. Why? Because if you displace the hand, the hand in an, in an, an ecological uh, um, background uh, will leave uh, uh, a previously hidden background uncovered. So you need uh, to, sub to, to replace the, the, the background uncovered uh, uh, by the, the shifting of the hand. You have to, to reconstruct the background. You have to uh, recognize the, the background. So the, the idea. Uh, which uh, came came out uh, with uh, in this laboratory it was that uh, the useful thing is to segmentate the background from uh, point clouds acquisition by kinet camera
So the, the steps that we are thinking to develop are a kinetic camera mounted on a, a pair of glasses, or goggles, sorry. Uh, so we have to uh, reconstruct the subject points of view, segmentate all the frame objects, uh, detect the, the hand and the arm subsequently, displace the arm, put uh, the object in the virtual environment, and let the, uh, the subject uh, do some interaction, simple interaction with this object. There is a little uh, uh, technical limitation that the Kinect camera view range lower limit uh, cannot uh, let the, the, the subject see the hand uh, from the beginning because there is a lower, there is a lower limit uh, in, the depth in the depth perception of the Kinect camera. So um, could be useful to have a Kinect camera on the top of the scene at a proper distance to acquire the whole environment. This leads to another technical problem that all, not all the sides of, of, the, um, of the scene are uh, acquired by the Kinect camera. So maybe uh, there is a necessity of a second Kinect camera to acquire uh, the other sides of the, of the hand, which can, uh, this, this sides there can be recollected by the two cameras and projected on the, on the goggles. Now the works are still in progress, and so we are waiting for some hint or some suggestion by you. Thank you for your attention. I don't know so much about the, the field, but is there a relationship between the cognitive science and like neuro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, because uh, in my laboratory, we there is a, a group of researchers. Uh, they are from different um, disciplines: uh, neuropsychologists, uh, psychologists, neurologists, ph physics, engineering, and they all collaborating, cooperating to develop a neurosciences uh, application. Yes, because uh, the the aim is to. Uh, apply this uh, this kind of research uh, to fMRI scan, so we want to to see the improvement of the subject at fMRI scan by means of, of resting state uh, MRI. So uh, as I, as I told you before, uh, the the people the subjects are, can interact with virtual reality, or they can uh, perform this kind of task uh, uh, with. Um, people uh, affected by neglect or affected by AMCI. After this uh, period of, uh, um, uh, of training, they will be asked to do uh, a second uh, resting state MRI, and we see which, what are the effects. Based on the principle that I uh, told you before, that, uh, is, that if uh, two regions, uh, uh, they talk each other, Let's let's say that uh, if two regions talk each other at rest, uh, it's uh, high probability that they um, will talk uh, each other during a specific task. So that's why uh, we think that uh, we can apply uh, virtual reality and augmented reality even in fMRI and neurosciences uh, application. And, and about the biology um, aspects, you, you talk about a little bit about the. Yes, I'm, I'm not a, a neurologist, uh, so. <laughs> yes, it's all, it's, if I can answer you. you uh, about the plasticity. Yeah. It never happens a permanent change. Mm -hmm. or all the time it's changing. You know, the, the, the plasticity in the brain is continuous. Right? Yeah. Long over, over Continuously, life. and it seems uh, that it lasts on all, all our life. So nobody. I don't know, maybe consider the real, real old, uh, real, real, a real elderly man because the plasticity uh, is all over, fortunately, all over our life. So. When you have a big lesion in the brain? Yes, it's if, uh, the, uh, it's if the, um, uh, the neurons uh, uh, that were, um, um, that 
um, the neurons that were um, uh, every 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 region of the brain as a, as a task. Uh, let's say that. But uh, if a region is uh, injured, uh, the other uh, neighbor region can do uh, can activate to, to to try to do the um, the functionality of the region that has been injured. So this is uh, that's uh, what is called the uh, neuroplasticity. So try to, to reach the, the same goal that the region that is not working at the moment. But of course they have not the, the 100 percent mm -hmm. to get the same function, right? They try, but of course not suitable. They would try, but uh, the, the, the aim is to, to recover uh, full at 100%, uh, uh, yes. Really? Yeah. How accessible is test kit as uh, How long does uh, participants have to be exposed? Yes, uh, typically you can expose them uh, at um, 45 minutes, 41 hours, 45 minutes. Sorry. Uh, after finishing that test, how soon has does he have to? Uh, you can do it soon. Mm, you don't have to. In um, the experiment test, he taken here to the MRI. Yes, the the, te the test can be can be uh, placed wherever you want. You you don't need to uh, to do uh, su suddenly. Uh, the uh, uh, resting state uh, MRI. You can do it uh, even two or three hours later, you, or uh, one day uh, later. Uh, no, the, the place is not important. Uh, the, the, the real problem is that you cannot uh, uh, um, ask the patient to interact in, uh, in MRI because of artifacts. He, he, cannot, he cannot move. That's, uh, but uh, yes, you can uh, you can expose him after uh, a short period uh, after the task. You can expose him uh, uh, one hour or two. Um, uh, this is a, a question on the on the time of exposure of the patient inside MRI. But uh, MRI is is now well known for its non-invasive uh, uh, features characteristics. So. Uh, a, a patient can be exposed even uh, three, four hours to to MRI. Yes, that's the that is uh, is success depends uh, upon that. That are not uh, a real X-rays, but uh, it depends. Uh, there are indirect signal that comes from the the body after a realignment of the of the spins. Of the of the electrons of the hydrogen, uh, uh, we we are plenty of hydrogen be, be because of water. So the the main principle is based on the alignment of spins uh, of our spins or the spins of the, of the electronic of the electrons around the the atoms. So that's why it's not so invasive fMRI. Uh, the typical uh, intensity for research uh, scan is uh, three Tesla, and now we have reached uh, seven Tesla too.